Hi everyone, it's Diane Evans with StampingWithDiane.com. Um, I'm a Canadian demonstrator here in the interior of British Columbia. So if you're joining me uh, again, thank you. Thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate that. And if you're joining me for the first time, make sure that you've subscribed to my YouTube channel. If you're joining me through YouTube or um, if you are on Facebook, make sure that you do give permission um, for StreamYard to give your information to me. Well, Betty, I don't know how you get on here so soon, but in any event, good afternoon. Um, yes, it is Technique Tuesday. How did they do that? Um, this is an oldie but a goldie. Um, it's one of those ones that, um, geez, I did this years ago, and I think I even did it on my Now What series. Um, on a Thursday night, but it's just one that I want you to have um, your own uh, PDF for uh, so that we can, um, it's just added to your collection and one that you won't forget how to use, that's for sure. Hello, Margaret from Australia. I'm so glad that you, oh, hello, hello. <laughs> okay, so let's just go right on down to my desktop here. So this is called Poppin' Pastels. Now, this, like I say, we used to have chalk markers, but now we have pastels. But we used to have every single color of Stampin' Up! Um, pastels or chalks. And they, it was amazing to do that. But this is such an easy, easy technique. But it's one of those ones that's been going on forever and ever. So what you need to have are these soft pastels. And, of course, they come in a really great arrangement of color. Um, I'm going to have to just check this on the back. So we have Coastal Cabana, Granny Apple Green. This, I think, is Night of Navy. Yeah. And then there's Poppy Parade, Mossy Meadow, and Gorgeous Grape. And then there's um, Death of the Delight. And this one, I'm just... Oh, Mango Melody. Okay. In any event, they kind of match with our colors, that sort of stuff. But not, not to the point that they really um match exactly but there's something that that are a lot of fun now i was actually going to show you something with just to show you this and then we'll go ahead and do our card so i think i'll grab there we go i'm just grabbing a white um, just a piece of basic white so that we've got something that we can work from. Hello, everyone. Oh, well, we're starting to get nice um, weather as well. So that's always a good thing. All right. So just to show you how this works, and it probably would be better if I had a bigger stamp. So I'm just going to grab one down here, like this one. And... I will show you how this looks by doing this. Now, the one key thing that you do need is you need to have these chalks. Sponge daubers are a big plus. I have dedicated um, sponge daubers. I don't use these for anything else but my um, pastels. And you are going to need, and this is going to be the star of the show, which really helps. And that is the Versamark. Um, it's... Um, it's it just helps with doing all of this. So we don't need to use an embossing buddy. So all I'm going to do, and I just want to show you this part. Whoops, it's not even stuck on there very well. So I'll just go and I'll use my first mark. And the only thing that's hard about this whole thing is seeing where you're going to pop those up. So I'm going to take this, and this is the part of the pick your tip. Uh, take your pick tool that you may not use very often, but let me go and show you. I'm just going to scrape some of this off onto my my block here, and this is the daffodil delight. Ooh, it's like running your thing on chalkboard, and then I think I'll just take a green so that you can kind of get the idea. This is not part of the card, but I want to show you how this just pops up and it just is an amazing technique. Now, 
I'm not sure what's going to happen. I guess tomorrow we're going to find out if this carries forward into the next annual catalog. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm just beside myself. But I do know certain colors that are staying. So I am happy that there's certain colors staying. Okay, so I've got that. You can't even really see that. But let's go ahead and I'm going to show you. So I'm going to grab my Poppy Parade one. And we're just going to kind of, you just take your sponge dauber, pick up some of this chalk. And then all we're going to do is you can pounce it. I find that rubbing it is the best way. But see how that's starting to just pop. And that hence the reason popping pas pastels. So let's see a green here. I should have done my leaves in green. Like I say, it's kind of hard to see where things go. So there's a green leaf here and the green stems. But, and then now you can just sort of rub this on like this. You can take an eraser. If you're not liking this particular look, you can take an eraser and I'll show you how that works on here. So I just take a regular artist eraser and I could go and I could erase this. But you know, I think this, um, the way it kind of looks um, around it, like how it goes around it, looks kind of cool in itself. So you could do that. So let's just do another tiny bit more of the poppy parade and just do it and pick up the, that color. Oh, what well, we didn't get, I guess I didn't ink that very good there, but this is just to show you how that works. And then you could go and rub it in that sort of stuff. Now, the key with this is, is if you burnish this enough, you are not going to have to add a fixative. If you want to add a fixative, you could just use, um, like, um, you could use aerosol hairspray, that sort of stuff. Let me go, and I'm just going to take, let's go and take this and get some of this Coastal Cabana. And I'm just going to grab this and, and just watch how this works on this. Thank you. And see how it just pops up. See, I didn't get that stamped enough there, but it would have worked okay on there. So that is called Popping Pastels. So let's go ahead and make the card that I had planned for this. So the colors I want to use are Coastal Cabana. So I'm just going to get some of that on there. I want some... Granny Apple Green. I think this Knight of Navy, this Knight of Navy is not a true Knight of Navy. I'm going to tell you that right now. But it gives kind of a really nice blue. And then we're also going to go in and use this Mossy Meadow as well. Now, I think the biggest complaint with this is not seeing what is colored. So you could use a different colored, um, a different colored paper, a light colored paper with it. But if you do, and this you want to be very careful with how you do this, because if you're particular about your stamp pads. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to use, let's just get this one out of the way. I wanted to use the framed florets. Let's see if we've got anything. <laughs> okay. Hello. It is an old technique, isn't it, Laura? All right. Well, like I say, you never know it. Maybe this is retiring, so I got it in in time. All right, so anyways, we're gonna use the framed florets. I'm just gonna use this piece down here. Um, I, I'm not going to take too much time with it, but I did cut some pieces out of this and then we're gonna to have to die cut this piece as well. So 
This is just a little bit of a tip. I am just taking some of my Coastal Cabana and I'm inking it up on here. And then what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to take this and kind of, I'm not going to properly clean it. Oh no, everyone says. So I've just taken it and rubbed it off that way. And then I'm going to come to my Versamark. And this should put a tiny bit of color onto my basic white paper. So let's hope that that happens. And then that way I can see the image better. So let's see, hopefully this works. So I can see a tiny bit of an image. You can just barely see that, but that's going to help me with my pastels and how to do the coloring. So that's a bit of a tip that you can do. So I have my Night of Navy sponge dauber. I have my um, Coastal Cabana. I have my, that's the Mossy Meadow, and this is the Granny Apple Green. So like I say, I have it dedicated. Now, the other thing is, is you could use these makeup applications. I think I got these at the dollar store. So if there's just little areas where you want to get into, so say I want to do this, and I want to get into just this area. I could go in with one of those and then I would turn that over and also go in and maybe get some of that mossy meadow in there as well. So let's see, we've got our colors. So I'm gonna go with the Coastal Cabana flower. Let's just See how that just pops that up just like that. And then this is quite a small image. So that's why I thought maybe. So there's the blue. See, it's not quite a true night of blue, but it's pretty good. <laughs> so what I could do, I've got granny apple green on this side i've got the mossy meadow i'll just come in here and like i say these were dollar store ones so they're it's not that big of a deal and i want to color that and then i can go with my coastal cabana and let's just go in and get that and then we'll go back in with our granny apple green to color the leaves. And this really helps when you are, um, um, it's a, such a small image. So let's go and get some more of this green to go up here. And then you wanna burnish this color in, these colors in. You know what, and I think I want a tiny bit more of the granny apple green up in here to give a nicer green so I know I'm going to die cut this so I'm not too worried about the colors that are going on there let's see we're going to come in with this this is quite a small one so yeah it is better with these makeup brushes but the sponge daubers work great so I'm just going to burnish that in because I do not want to use a fixative. You do not need to have a fixative. Let's get this blue in a little bit more. So see now we've got this popping up up there. But to use this part of your um, take your pick tool really helps to scrape some of that off. So I could leave this around or I could just clean it off. It's not a big deal. But remember to have dedicated um, sponge ones on there. So I'll just throw that back into my daubers there so that I've got them all together. And like I say, I could come in. That's on my sheet which is no big deal and now what I'm going to do is um, cut that out and I'll just come in with my mini cut and emboss machine not too fussy of a particular card that I'm making remember always when I do this particular tech when I do my technique what I do um 
I'm not sure what you're calling. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to come in with my, I am using the number three plate on this particular um, embossing thing. I just find sometimes it works better with popping the things through. So let's just, is this the right one? Maybe this isn't the right die. Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm just going to line that up. And I should come in with my post-it note tape, but I removed it off of my table. So we're going to try to do the best that we can without it. So to make sure that that's right, I'm just coming and I lever this down so that I can just put it right down and that should be good I shouldn't it shouldn't move on me but see how it goes through your cut and emboss a lot easier with that number three plate all right so there's our image that we're going to use on this particular card so I've got some cardstock I'm hoping that this is going to look okay so I've got some Coastal Cabana. I've cut it four and a quarter by 11, scored it at five and a half. Let's just fold that into the mountain so that we get that nice even side there. And then we're gonna burnish it. The nice thing about it, Betty, if you, it really doesn't show up that much on the, um, the card. All right, so this is an online exclusive embossing folder. This is what I call the thatched one. And this is the part of a basic three. So I'm just going to go ahead and that's three and three quarters by five. Oh, look at that. I see my post-it note tape right there. And we're just going to put that right down on there. Yeah, I'm keeping my fingers crossed about this color, this Coastal Cabana. We shall see. If it retires and you see it tomorrow, you know I'm going to be crying. All right. And I just went, actually, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I just went into my drawers of paper and I just took things out of it. So I've got a piece of Bermuda Bay. It was cut with the stitched rectangles. I'm just going to put that on there. I've got... Um, this is one of the larger frames. I did cut this frame out though. So I was going to put this on like that, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on because it's a bigger frame and we're just going to put it down there, I think. And then we can put this on top and see, this is where I was going to go and just put this within the frame. See how that's going to work on there. Just like that. Yeah, that'll work. So let's just go and put this together. I mean, that's honestly, that's a lot of times how I, I do my cards is I go, oh, I feel like doing, say, a Bermuda Bay or that type of a card. And I'll just go into the drawer because I put my scraps in with the drawer. Oh, good, good. Oh, <laughs> You collect many embossing folders. I know embossing folders are amazing. I'm just going to kind of drop that down a little bit. Um, and I'm wondering if I should pop that up. You know what? I am going to pop that up because I'm not popping too much of that. So let's just throw dimensionals on here. Like I say, it's not really the card that we're doing. It's the technique that it's all about, right? I could have had a bigger sample, that's for sure. So let's put that down about there. And then what I want to do is I want to put this on, but I want to pop this up here. Okay, so I'm just going to glue this down. Oh, thank you. 
I was um, almost lost track of time because I was busy trying to get my mystery boxes together. And uh, yeah, a lot of work. I thought it was going to be a lot easier than what it is, but it isn't. All right. So then I'm just going to go ahead and I want to put, now I want to put a sentiment on and I thought I could use this Costa Cabana. I could do that or else I could use Bermuda Bay. I'm going to use the Costa Cabana because I want it to match. And I used this and I've already gone ahead and done this part, this celebrate. So I did it with on Costa Cabana and I'm thinking to myself, I want to use this this ribbon, it's a pool party ribbon, but it does tend to blend in. So let's see what I've got here. Now I went and I tied a bow with it too. See how that looks. And I wanted to just put that kind of over there. So this part here is going to go up here and it can come off of the card and like oops. so or we can put it on like this that might be the route to go all right so I'm going to cut that off a little bit off I'm going to put this on at the end we'll see how that goes so this is going to just come over to this side. So I'm going to put a dimensional on here and glue on this part. Just like that. Let's just put that right there. You know, and honestly, I could maybe use the other pool party ribbon which is this one, which might be a little bit finer. I'm not sure, let me just tie a bow with that. Oh, thank you. Brenda from Saskatchewan. I tell you, nothing like a small, small world. Um, Brenda reached out to me after the BOGO sale and said, oh, do you know um, somebody? And of course, yeah, Lorraine is on my team. So very, very, I, I love when it shows up and it's such a small world. I think Stampin' Up! really sh makes the world smaller anyway. So Oops, there. let's see what that looks like. Maybe that's better to have. I didn't glue that yet. Maybe that would be better. Yeah, I think maybe it will be. What do you think? This bow or this bow? I'm just going to come in here. And I'm just going to glue this part down. All right, this bow or this bow. This is a little too coarse, maybe. And then I'm going to go and let's pop this part up. I want it to come off of the card as well. So I'm going to also put on dimensionals. The second one, the lighter one. <laughs> Well, we're not going to get anybody happy. I can tell you that right now. It's either going to be the lighter bow. Well, let's try the lighter one. I do like this bow. I like bows. I like ribbon. Let's see. Let's go down like that. And then I want to tie this tighter. Because that's the whole key to making bows, right? Tight bows. And we're going to put that right about, you know what, we can put it there. I'm going to come in with my glue dots. And I might even, I don't know, I might use two. Nope, that should be okay. The nice thing about it being light like that is that it you're not going it doesn't um, cover up the sentiment that much. So let's see. Okay, it's like that. 
Now, I know it needs something here. So I wanted to come in and this was my thought process was I really like these opaque adhesive dots and they have some really nice white ones in there. So I'm going to come in. We do not have Coastal Cabana, but we do have Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to color. Because I the light Bermuda Bay looks like Coastal Cabana. I don't know. Maybe we might use this one here. Another one of those. So let's see. like that and one here as well and then of course we have the inside of the card it's pretty basic actually we could have maybe done a bit more on there but it's kind of a it's an understated card right so let's go with that same stamp set and I'm going to use the Versamark again on the inside and I just want to get kind of the flower part on there so let's just do that right about there I'm going to come back in with our ink and this is a smaller area I've got to see where that is there we go just like that and then the green and I think we'll use the granny apple green on this as well I love Granny Apple Green and this this um, Costa Cabana together. There we go. And let's go back in and just pick this up and just, there we go. There. And then that's going to go on the inside of the card. So tomorrow what's going to happen, oh look. I didn't mean to use that. Oh, well. That's okay. Now we're using it. And we're just going to put that on the inside. See how pretty that Costa Cabana and Granny Apple Green look together. There. And like I say, it's pretty, pretty flat sort of card but like I say it's showing off the popping pastel technique so it's just like that and then the inside we finished that off as well all right so I hope you like that if you enjoyed this give me the thumbs up make sure that you share my video I really do appreciate that if you have any questions at all make sure you reach out um, and if there's certain technique that maybe you want to see done, reach out to that. I, I do keep a list of everything that people are asking for. Um, and it really helps me. It's, it's like that, you know, that, that, that thing of, oh, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? I think that's the hardest decision to make. To me, that's one of the hardest <laughs> decisions to make. So if you've got somebody else that's given the ideas, it really, really helps on there. So, all right. So what is happening? Like I say, this, um, um, my PDF will be going at 9.05 on my Facebook group. And that link is right down below here. And it's the Stampin' with Diane group. And it, it will be in the file section. All the other techniques are all in the file section as well. Oh, thank you, Kay. Um, I love doing techniques. So this this is fun. Sometimes it's hard finding different techniques. I completely forgot about this until I came across my pastels. I'm wondering if maybe they might retire tomorrow. So that's kind of an interesting thing. You know what? I'm just going to move this, this one button or this one embellishments just a little bit there. Um, 
And then what's happening tomorrow? Hopefully, hopefully I put up the mystery. It's a mystery challenge. It'll be at three o'clock Pacific time. So your clues will go on on the groups and that at noon. Hopefully I hit the proper button to get it to go because it went to a completely different group. It didn't go to the proper group. So that's kind of funny. Um, so tomorrow is um, no. It'll be three o'clock Pacific. So three o'clock Pacific time tomorrow. I don't want to interfere with any of the announcements that's happening with Stampin' Up as well. So it's three o'clock um, and three o'clock is, let's see, seven o'clock your time, I believe, Pam, because you're in Nova Scotia, right? So that's, yeah, in any event, is three o'clock Pacific. All right, everybody, I um, hope to see you. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate that. Remember, if you live in Canada and do not have a demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Um, and um, we will see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock Pacific time. Bye for now.